Hey, you lads and ladies. I'm the one, the only, your favorite YouTuber of all time, the Jawsome one. And today, I'm going to talk about one of my new all-time favorite games, Octopath Traveler. So to give this video some semblance of structure, I'm going to start with the things that I like the least about the game and then build up from there into the parts that I love about it. Now, I want to make this very clear. I have not yet beaten the game, so any of my opinions I'm about to display in this video could change in the future, and I may or may not do a video about it if I choose to. It really all just depends on whether I feel it's important enough to be worth talking about. Anyways, to get started with the video, I'm going to start with these two points of contention that I have and then move up from there into something more positive. And I want to start by talking about the first point of contention, and this in my opinion is the worst thing of the game, is the stereotyping. Uh, a lot of the characters, heroes and villains, are just stereotypes that they try to add some degree of some degree of uniqueness to, something that helps them stand out from just their associated stereotypes. Uh, my worst, my least favorite example of one of these stereotypes would be Cyrus. He's that stereotypical scholar who's so ingrained in his work that he sort of, it's, it's like he just doesn't get anything else. He's one of those characters who is so smart and yet so stupid at the same time. You see it a lot, of, I see it a lot especially in, in anime. I see it a lot in that, and uh, I even see it occasionally in modern TV shows. Besides Cyrus, the other thing that I really find a lot of stereotyping with is with uh, side characters. It's much more noticeable in them than in any of the main characters. For example, there is one character who plays a very short role in, in Cyrus's story. She's this girl who's just uh, who's very obviously enamored with him, but she's also really shy. And I really hate this stereotype. It's really annoying to see characters act this way, and then to have the, the main characters be all like, I don't see it, I don't know what's going on. My second point of contention is with the the gameplay it's very samey it just uh there are things that they do that change it up uh quite often times and they do it in the ways that you would pretty much expect out of an rpg there are a couple things that they do to add some variety and uniqueness that help it stand out but really i don't think they're anything major enough to consider it a truly unique game the two things that they do is, for one thing, they give unique character abilities, which again, it's nothing new. There are plenty of other games out there that already do this. Though Octopath Traveler does a really good job with it, it keeps it balanced so none of the characters are truly overpowered. My specific point of contention with the sameness of it all is that there's nothing that breaks. Aside from the story and the gameplay itself, you don't really have anything else. Typically what I see in RPGs, something that kind of helps set it aside is uh, maybe they'll give you uh, some sort of uh, specific or unique quest line. That doesn't, it doesn't really help that much in my opinion when games do that, but that is one example of something that games do to change things up is by, is by having certain kinds of quests that are kind of like puzzles. And Octopath Traveler does do this, but it's not enough that it really breaks from the gameplay, because usually those missions are very, very short and they don't take a lot of time to think through. Seriously, a lot of them were literally just as simple as, oh, use this character's ability on this one character, and now you've gleaned this new piece of information that immediately solves the quest for you. I, I really was expecting a bit more out of, out of those kinds of quests. Like, maybe it involves, it, it just digs a little bit deeper. Like, for example, um, in one character's home location, I can't remember whose it was, I think it was the place where you pick up Ophelia, who's the cleric, and there's this one person who's, he, she like, it's, it's either a she or a he, and uh, oh no, 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 I remember where it is, it's at the Riverside Village where you pick up the, um, the guy who's really, really good at healing, <laughs> that guy, yeah, um, in his village there's a girl who picks up like a, a bottle with a message in it and says it's like from a real mother, and then, uh, basically, you know, you go talk to her parents and they tell you, yeah, she's actually not our daughter. Because her, her, their daughter was afraid to confront them about this. 
So then you go back and you talk to her and you confirm, like, yeah, it's true. And so then she's like, well, now I have to go out there and find out who my mother is. And I was expecting it to evolve a bit more, like, maybe be like, oh, okay, well, maybe you could follow this person. Like, maybe you're supposed to follow this person or guide this person. And, uh, it is true that most people really, really hate those kinds of missions. Because you, you usually have to, like, protect that character from, you know, from dangerous enemies and whatnot. And it can be really hard to do because they're, you know, always, like, way weaker than your team. And if they die, it's like an instant fail and you have to start all the way back at the beginning. And, um, but I still think that that would have been better than her just running off on her own. Like, as I saw that moment where she just takes off, I, I look at our, I look at the heroes, the party that I had assembled so far in the story, and I was like, are, are you guys not gonna go with her? Are you guys not gonna help make sure that she's okay? Like, there's dangerous enemies out there. You can hardly take ten paces out into the wilderness without getting attacked by God above knows what. And it's, uh, it's kind of dumb, in my opinion. It just... I just think that there needs to be a bit more progression in these kinds of sidelines. Again, I want to repeat this, I haven't gotten very far into the game. Maybe there is something that they do in the later on parts of the story. I just finished collecting all of the different characters. So, this is something that can very much change, and if I feel it's important, I will do a video on it. The point that I feel the most neutral about so far is the story. I very much have a love-hate relationship with it because it does a lot of things that I like and then a lot of things that I dislike. And that's really just because of the fact that everything that happens in the story revolves around the stereotypes of these individual characters. For example, my favorite character, Olberic, his stereotype is that he's a lone warrior who's been in depression for almost a decade because his king died right in front of him and he couldn't stop it. But the reason that he sets off on his journey is because he finds out that there's that the guys who killed him is actually kind of this kind of the secret organization sort of a thing, and uh, he wants to set out and find out more about them and better yet put a stop to them entirely. So that's his reasoning for setting out on this journey, and, you know, clearly that's a stereotype. It happens all the time in TV shows and cartoons and whatnot. But I really like how they handle it with him, because... I like the way they handle this, because the way they show it is in cutscenes that involve voice acting, and they do a really, really good job at portraying what the characters feel and at what they're going through and what sets them in motion emotionally and it's really it's really touching to see how much care that went into this this was clearly made by developers who have a lot of love for this game despite the obvious flaws that i just pointed out and uh it's interesting to me to see them purposefully go for the stereotypes instead of trying harder to avoid them which is what I would have done as a story writer. It's at this point that we really start to evolve into the more positive things that I like about the game. For one thing, I really love their combat system. I, I really do. Uh, just, even though I pointed out that it's very samey and it can get old if you play the game for long enough, but I really, really like it. It's, again, very much a standard RPG in a lot of ways, but it's very flashy. It, everything looks really good. But it's a, more than just that. You still have to strategize. And the game's not brutally difficult, but it's difficult enough that you can't just goof around. Uh, especially when fighting against specific bosses. You have to think about the best ways to take them down. You can't just throw things at them in whatever way you want to. You have to analyze them. You have to try out these different combos, and you have to figure out what they're weak against and what their different attack patterns are like. And, uh, because if you're not paying attention, and if you're not taking at least a little bit of care, you can lose. So, it's not hard, but it's not easy. You, you don't get to breeze through it, they won't let you do that. However, the things that, do, the things that do shake it up is that there are these two characters that I really like, and it shakes up the combat system pretty well. And that, those two characters being Olberic and, I, I don't know how to pronounce the name, it's like Hyanitz? Hanitz? something like that, and she's like, the, the lady in question, Hanitz, is this uh, 
this huntress and she like captures wild animals. And what she can do is basically she can sort of provoke the townspeople into fighting against her wild animals as a sort of way to train them. You know, she sort of comes up like, I bet you can't handle these guys. I bet you can't. And they're like, well, bring it on. You know. And uh, I like that because with her, you can pretty much provoke anybody, even if you're up against a character who's like miles stronger than you. If you know some sort of way that she can actually handle surviving a much stronger character, you can choose to do that. And again, the thing I like about this is the characters you take on, if the game if the game is allowing you to, that is, uh, depending on if you're using Olberic or Hanit. With Olberic, you can't take on enemies that are too much stronger than you. You have to like reach a certain level before you're allowed to fight this guy, or you have to get further in the story before you can fight this guy. But there are always one-on-one -on -one fights, and again, depending on who you're up against, they might be stronger than you, which means you have to plan things out. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that other point. Because I got interrupted by the stomping around upstairs, I completely forgot what my point was and where I was going with this. I have lost my entire train of thought up until now. I don't remember anything about what I've said exactly. This is really annoying. I can't, because I just got interrupted, I can't remember entirely if I concluded my point on the 1v1 battle, on the 1v1 battles that Olberic and Hanit can use. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to the next part. I'm sorry if this uh, if this feels rushed and incredibly unstructured. I literally can't structure when I'm being interrupted like this every not even five minutes. You're getting interrupted not even every five minutes. This is why you don't want to have a family if you're doing YouTube, guys. If you want to do YouTube, make sure you know some way to isolate yourself from your family so that they're not interrupting you all the time. Uh, unless, of course, you cherish and welcome these interruptions. Which uh, you only really want to do if you're someone who has a kid. <laughs> because everybody loves seeing children and dogs and stuff. Nobody likes it when your teenage son walks in and interrupts you. Or your grandmother. Well, maybe, maybe your grandma. But So moving on to the next thing that I like about the combat system. Is uh, they shake it up by adding this extra... Uh, thing that they call BP, and I, I can't remember what BP stands for, but think of it kind of like action points that other games have. Basically, it's like every turn that you don't use them, they build up, and I think the max they get up to is five, you get one every turn. And um, <clears throat> you basically can use them to just power up your attacks or your abilities. So uh, instead of using more uh, SP, which again, I forget what that stands for, but it's basically magic. The, instead of using like more SP to charge up your attacks like you see in some other games, what they use is BP and you use that to power up your moves and your abilities, even your defense, even if you want to defend yourself and you know the enemy's got a strong attack incoming, just beef up your defense with the, with the BP and you're all good. And I really like that because it adds a kind of a new layer of strategy to the game and I don't remember if I've noted, if I've noted this before, but uh, the reason why BP is also so important is because every enemy has sort of a breaking point. That's that's what I'm gonna call it. I'm, I'm gonna call them a break. I'm gonna call them break points. That's not what BP stands for, by the way. I'm pretty sure. But basically, every enemy uh, has different weaknesses, right? Some are weak against light. Some are weak against swords. Some are weak against wind. You know, whatever, right? And. Uh, once you build up your BP to a high enough level, once the enemy hits their breaking point, you can use the BP and hit them for a whole bunch of damage, and it's it's pretty awesome. I I love using um, uh, Oberic as my current team leader for the party, right? And he has this one move that he can do where I do like 2,000 damage in one hit with him because of this, and he's only like level 16. So it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun to see him just dish out just this this ton of damage on a single guy. The next thing that I like about the game is the different character abilities and I like how everything sort of comes together in different ways. One thing that I've noticed is that they seem to have two of everything. 
And it's kind of hard to explain if you haven't played the game for yourself. So let me try and do my best to explain what I mean by that. So uh, every character is different, right? Every character has different abilities, every character has different stereotypes, but there's two of everything in terms of what they can do in and outside of battle. For example, I mentioned how Oberic and Hannah earlier both had the ability to challenge or provoke enemies. And one thing you'll notice, as I mentioned before, that Oberic can't challenge people if he's not strong enough, whereas Hannah can challenge anyone that she wants. And that pretty much applies to everything too. Uh, from the magic usage, for example, there's always two characters that can use ice, there's always two characters that can use fire spells, there's always two characters that have lightning abilities, there's always two characters that can use a bow, there's always two characters that can use a sword, there's always two characters that can use moves that involve sort of stealing from the enemy. For example, the thief and merchant. The thief can steal items, whereas the merchant can steal money from enemies directly. Uh, so that, that's kind of a fun thing to do, it's something you can kind of plan around. So I, I really enjoy all of that. I, I enjoy the way they shake things up and how they get all of the characters to sort of collude together in this very interesting way, despite them all being different at the same time. I, I like how they're able to get that in a to work in a cohesive manner. And I, I can already picture the struggle that these guys had coming up with this and getting it all to come together. And this brings me to my final point, and this is what I love most. It's the, the soundtrack. It's great. It's, um, it's sort of, sort of orchestral. I, I don't know what the official term is for that, for the kind of music that they use. So I'm just going to say orchestral because it involves a lot of varied in instruments. You know, obviously they have drums, they have violins, they have trumpets where they use trumpets, they have... They just have a wide variety of instruments, and uh, the way they put it all together, it sounds very, very pretty. And it's immediately, the second I started playing the game, it hit me hard in the nostalgia, even though I've never touched the game before. And I think the reason for that is because its music reminds me of a childhood game that I owned growing up called Lufia 2, The Rise of the Sinistrals, which was also famed for having a great soundtrack for its time. The thing that I think hits me the most in the nostalgia for from Octopath Traveler is the theme for the Riverside city, town, whatever. That area, it just has a very soothing tune, and it's like this every time I hear it, it's like just this wave of nostalgia that hits me. And I, I think it comes from Lufia too. Because they have a very similar track that, invo that evokes the exact same feeling. And it's done just as well despite being so much older. Which makes it a really, very impressive in my opinion. Though I know I'm speaking with a huge nostalgia bias. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. My throat is killing me because I'm not used to talking this much or for this long. I've cut all of this out. But uh, for the past hour, I've been getting mad at my family members upstairs because I asked them not to come into the kitchen because I'm recording. But then everybody decides to pretty much just ignore that and they come into the kitchen anyways. Uh, and because of that, it dragged on this video for well over an hour because I've been getting interrupted so often. Whatever's left of the footage I have, I might decide to include a compilation. So anyways... That's all I got for this video. If you liked it, like it. Helps me out. Helps me grow my channel. With all that said, I hope to see you guys again in the next video. Bye-bye.